Greetings, clinicians in private practice. Welcome to This Is Private Practice. It is 4.30 on Tuesday, the 5th of November. Now, I'm not expecting any Australians at all to participate in this video today because we had the horse race that stopped the nation, apparently. I forgot about it until the internet went down. <laughs> no, it didn't go down. It just got really bad at 3 o'clock when the horse race was on. I cannot believe this country gets so excited about something that takes, what, five minutes? Anywho, um, I have very, very vocal things to say about the whole horse racing industry, which I won't get into because you know things and stuff. Hello to the people who are watching. I'm just trying to find you because apparently I'm not going to get to see who you are right now. Um, so we just need to wait for the for the Facebook to uh, tell me that you're here. There's three of you watching and Linda Mottram has said hello. Thank you very much, Linda. How's your day been? I had a, I had a day where this morning, oh my God, the, <laughs> the time zone gods were not playing friendly with me. Poor Francis Harvey and I, we had such a bad, oh, such a bad experience <laughs> with the time. She had a day. I had a different day. They weren't the same day. And we just had to stop kicking ourselves and apologize. Carol Atkinson, lovely to see you. Um, yeah, it's really, really cool to have you here today. I, um, yeah, it was just such a bizarre start to the day. I was really shaken up and trying to get my head into gear. And it didn't matter what I did, it was taking me three times as long as anyone else had those days. <laughs> oh, Linda, you got your hair colored. Have you got purple in your hair too? And Carol, yeah, I hate time change as well. Um, so many people hate the time change thing. All right, now that they're coming through, I can turn myself off. So that's all good. That can go over there. Hey, I just wanted to speak into something really awesome that happened at the Success Mindset Masterclass not so long ago. Um, so... I don't know about you, but there are a lot of people, myself included, who often feel like I have nothing of value to say that hasn't already been said. That there are lots of other people talking about the same sort of stuff that I want to talk about, so why should I try and talk about the things that I'm going to talk about? So content marketing is a really big deal. That is the whole point of blogging. So if you need to go back to that point, like why bother blogging? It is a form of marketing called content marketing. Basically you're sharing something of value that your prospective clients or customers might be interested in to help them know you, like you and trust you so that they will then be more inclined to want to make a purchase from you. So that is the point of blogging, but it's really interesting for health professionals because as soon as we are asked to put something in writing and put it out to the world, all sorts of self-criticism comes into play. We start criticizing ourselves for not being good enough, for not knowing enough, not being academically gifted enough, to not having enough numbers and letters after our name, to but we then go and do research to find out what other people have written and discover that other people are writing about the same thing. And because they've written about the same thing, what on earth should I say? And I haven't got anything to say. And why would anybody want to read my stuff over Joe's stuff? Because Joe's stuff's always going to be awesome. And I don't want to compete with Joe and I can never be good enough. Anyone else have these types of thoughts going on in their head? Anyone? 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 Yeah, I know. We all get it. So... It came up in the Success Mindset Masterclass. One of the very brave ladies, they were all incredibly brave, and they were all women. It's not a women's only event, by the way, but it's just the way it happened this year. Actually mentioned in conversation as we were talking, I can't write about that. It's already been written about. Ha! <laughs> so then we had a task. And I knew it was going to come up, and I'm really grateful that that conversation was had. Because if we don't address this, it is a limiting factor and it makes us hide and be small and that stops us from learning how to express ourselves in a way that people we can serve actually want to work with us. So I tasked the 10 people in the room, everybody needed to write a blog. Every single person in that room needed to write a blog. The two conditions were it had to be on anxiety and it had to be no more than a thousand words. Okay, some of us did a little bit more than a thousand words because, you know, counting's not our strength. 
but I can assure you from that 10 blogs, we have had some incredible, actually all 10 of them have been amazing. It's actually turned the whole concept of I don't have anything to say into a totally different conversation. Each blog is contributing to the body of knowledge and to our learning and our own development. Now, some of these blogs have, now I've just written a list of some of the themes. So out of 10 different blogs, so 10,000 words, that's it, with 10 different authors, and the only thing that they were allowed to comment on, they were needed to write on anxiety, and I didn't give them any more framework than that, which you know made some of them very queasy. So we had someone write about the role of coffee, but they actually turned that into personal responsibility. We had some personal stories about, hey, this, I get to live with this every day and this is how I'm doing it. We've had somebody talk about how you go to work when you're still experiencing anxiety. We've talked, somebody's talked into their fear of flying and how the brain is activated when we become fearful. That was real, I found that fascinating. I love neuroscience. Uh, we've talked about the role of significant relationships and how anxiety plays out in significant relationships. I'm just sitting there going, oh, hell's bells. There's me having a discussion with my husband right in a page in front of me. Prospective client being attracted. Huh? See how that happened? There was a blog on dementia, which I think everybody in this group has gone, when is that going to be published? I need to share that. So useful for those of us who have got people living with dementia and carers in their world. <laughs> and somebody's written on the anxiety that was created when they were asked to write a blog about anxiety. Somebody's written about how you pull yourself out of a really anxious moment. And then there's a whole piece on normalizing it for prospective clients. So what the purpose of me sharing this with you is, congratulations to these ladies because they have done this task and they have done exceedingly well, is that the way you say something is as important as what you have to say. It's not, it doesn't matter that others have gone out and said it before you. It doesn't matter that you don't have all the letters after your name. It doesn't matter. It what matters that you are writing something that is informative, that is compelling, and that is interesting for the people, for the audience of people you were wanting to attract into your business or to read more of your things. It's that simple. So health professionals, I know you're terrified of getting it wrong. I get that. I get that as health professionals, if we get it wrong with our clients, there are really big consequences. Do no harm is kind of at the foundation of everything that underpins our decision-making process. We are natural risk assessors because it's been drummed into us since day one of going to college and university. We can't ignore that. But this whole content writing piece, this whole blogging piece, this whole social media creation piece, you, you need to let go of some of that needing to be as good as everyone else because the way you present this information might be the way that client can hear it, receive it, understand it, and get the help that they have been avoiding for so long. It might be your voice and your experience and your way of explaining it that leads a family to come and get therapy, that allows somebody to actually go, I think I need to get a physiotherapist to look at my hip. It might be the thing that stops somebody from living with major panic attacks, realizing, oh, I don't have to live with these. So please, health professionals, I beg you, if you are dealing with this thing that we call imposter syndrome or feeling like you have got nothing of value to say, please, Please stop it. Please, I, am re I really just want you to stop it. And I want you to start thinking out the, about the people who are missing out on services because you're not brave enough to start talking to them. So this has not been a live about how to deal with anxiety. This has been a information about what happens when I ask 10 people to write a blog about anxiety and the breadth and the depth of knowledge that has come out from that. Nobody wrote the same blog as someone else. It just didn't happen. So what I'm actually going to do, it's going to take me a couple of weeks to put this together because, you know, Joe and her overcommitment thing. I'm actually going to put this together so you can all see it. So you can see what we actually created. And there's a few things that I need to get, hurdles I need to get through to for that to come to fruition. But I'm going to share it with you and allow you to, to actually see it. So you, 
you actually know that what it is you have to say is worthwhile, is important, and is actually going to make somebody's day. How cool is that? All right, Tuesday, you've been awesome. Looking forward to Wednesday. For those of you who played on the Melbourne Cup, I hope that a horse won. Um, I'm assuming it did because there were horses who were running and I hope nobody got hurt. So that's just all I want to say about that whole thing today. Lisa Pugic, welcome from WA. I assume you're still in WA. Just in case anybody wants to know, Lisa's pretty awesome. I think she's a pretty cool chick. Oh, I'm glad that she's on my live today. <laughs> anyway, until tomorrow, go be your awesome self.